Well, I really, I really thought mine was just a cold, so I didn't test till like three days later. Yeah, you well, know, I tested be quickly because you know Janice knew she had it. So yeah, yeah, I was actually shocked when it came out positive. I thought, no. <laughs> And I, oh, yeah. I don't know where I got it. Well, supposedly this BA5 yeah. is uh, ultra uh, communicative. Right. So even if you're, if you're outside and not in real close to people, if there's a couple people, hi. <laughs> if there's a couple people that have it and it's in the air. Yeah. Uh, do they say like how quickly you get it then? Like once you've been exposed? It's a, it's a, yeah. I mean, it comes quick. It's a few, a few days. It's not like, okay. it's, a, it's not like seven days or anything like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, mine's a mystery as to where I got it. I don't know. But like you said, yeah, it's so contagious. So how are you two doing? We're doing okay, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm I'm still doing like you the rotary meetings from home mm -hmm. because uh, it takes a while to get back to normal. Yeah. So, is there anybody else on the video? Uh, well, there's uh, Aaron and uh, Emmett and uh, Bruce, and then uh -huh. uh, Wolf's. Wolf's there, he's running the meeting today rather than me. And then the other wolf land is the owl. You know, have the owl. Uh, gotcha. Here comes, yeah, here comes Stephanie. Aaron, my name's Aaron Prescott. I'm a new member, just officially uh -oh. inducted last week. So that's right. Yes. Welcome. We talked for a few minutes last week. Yeah, we were outside. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. welcome. So thank so you so much. This little one. This is Xavier, um, so I'll be attending on Zoom probably quite a bit um, when I have him. So. Yeah, well, he's a little sweetheart. So thank you. Thank you. Xavier. <laughs> All right. Oh, there's a bell. Good morning, Rotary. Echo. Echo. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Good morning, Rotary. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Friday morning. I think we're going to get started with Cap, who's going to do the invocation. Father, thank you for the respite time of summer. Time to be with friends. Time to be with family time to relax. Help us to remember that while our part of the world is calm, that other parts need our help with peace, food, water, and medicine. Thank you for the people in this room and in this club that help with doing all that and supplying the world with healing. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Cap, for uh, taking on the invocation and the pledge. We appreciate that. <laughs> all right, how about some announcements this morning? What, who can get us started with the great stuff going on? Ingrid? And if you could make your announcement here so the Zoom folks can hear you. Well, thanks, Susan. Um, we have great attendance for the uh, Transportation Research Center, but we do have a couple more slots. So if you'd like to bring uh, a guest along with you, or if you've not signed up yet or send an email to me about joining us for the August 5th meeting, will be held at the Transportation Research Center. Lou Troby has uh, arranged a special private tour just for our club for August 5th. I think I've got everyone who sent me an email uh, and signed up from last week, but do take a look. If you haven't signed up yet and you still uh, want to, 
please take a look. And again, we do have room if you want to bring somebody. I'll send around the, the board. If you want to add somebody behind your name as a guest, go ahead and sign that up on the clipboard right now. Thanks. Thanks, Susan. Sure. And guys, this is important to know that this is not just a tour for anybody. Um, uh, Lou put this thing together, and it's uh, truly by invitation only. So we get to go. Sign up, though, so we can get you registered. August 5th, we will not be meeting here on August 5th. We will be at the TRC. Okay, any other announcements? Claudia? Um, we have finalized... Um, the plans for our peace pole installation. It's being installed in Cochran Park near the pavilion. Um, it is a eight, nine foot peace pole that is going up. It's not up yet. On August 6th, Saturday, August 6th, we will be dedicating and revealing it. It'll be covered up until then. Um, everybody is invited. If you're at the Irish Festival, come on over. Um, so if you're working, if you're working the Irish Festival that day, you can't come over. Um, but it's going to be a city dedication and the officials and all that kind of thing. So I just want to let everybody know that it's coming soon. What it's, time? Do you know what's oh yes, uh, eleven thirty. About a fifteen-minute kind of window of you know the mayor and um, somebody from Rotary and stuff like that. All right. Thank you so much. And Dave, I think we have Dublin Irish Festival news, right? Good morning, Rotary. Good morning. All right, be more, be up there. Listen, uh, I want to let you know as it was previously announced, August fifth, sixth, and seventh, we're responsible for fifty-four shifts at the Irish Festival. We'll be doing the uh, the liquor distribution again. We've made the city and in agreement with the Rotary Club has made uh, a lot of changes to the process. So we kind of simplified it. So a lot of the the, the tasks that people wanted to avoid last year, working the iPad and all that stuff, we've done away with all of that. So it's going to be a lot more simplified and a lot easier for the uh, field portion of the of the volunteers to, to do the inventory job. There will be a radio that you call back into the central thing and we'll ca uh, take care of it from there. And so I really need to stress both to the members here and the members on Zoom we still have a lot of open squares of, for, that we need volunteers for. And talking to a lot of the members, I know a lot of members have had conflicts with previously scheduled events and things of that nature. So it's looking like we may want to consider asking folks if they wouldn't mind doing double shifts, signing up for a second shift on another day, particularly on Saturday and Sunday, the afternoon and evening shifts are, uh, are in need of volunteers. I've got a clipboard I'm going to pass around. Look for the yellow highlighted areas. That's where we really need volunteers. So if you would, uh, I think we've tried to make it as simple and as easy as, it, as we can as far as the duties that we're going to be doing, but uh, we still need to fill every one of these slots in order to receive the payment from the city for, uh, for the work we're doing. So if you got a chance, sign up. David, we can invite family members. You can invite family members, neighbors, friends, anybody that you can put their name on the list. Do it. All right, and to help that out, I am asking for folks in this room, but first I'm asking for folks on Zoom. So those on Zoom, I hope you're listening. I need some help in just reaching out to our members via a phone call. So could you, would you be willing to call five members to ask them, their availability for the Dublin Irish Festival. Right now, Sunday is looking the scariest, in my opinion. We don't have many people signed up for Sunday. We need we need some people on, we, we just need slots filled. So I'm asking for folks that would be willing to call five of our members. I have a list here of members. Just call them, ask them how they're doing, what they're up to, and hey, what are you doing the weekend of August 5th, 6th, and 7th? So, first you guys on Zoom, can I see who might want to, who would be interested in calling five of our members? Would you raise your hand? All right, I don't see anyone. Sharon, Emmett, Stephanie, Trisha. Take yourself off mute. Ron and Stephanie both raised their hand. All right, so we got Ron. And I will email you your five folks. So thank you, Ron. And thank you, Stephanie. 
Can I make one more amendment to my announcement? Uh huh. If you, the road, uniform of the day will be the rotary t shirt, either the gray or the white one. If you need one, I have plenty out in the uh, alcove out here, so feel free to stop by and pick one up. Dave, is there any training required this year? No. Okay. We made that very simple. Yeah, great. Okay, in the room, I need just five more people who agree who have time. So thank you very much. Cindy? Here's your list of five people. Come on, guys, don't be shy. It's just a phone call. Claudia, here are yours. Oh, Mona, you're the best. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, the second page of the shifts. As of yesterday, the shifts that were still needed, that can change, but please um, oh, talk them up and put them on there for whatever we can. Anyone else? Come on, guys, don't be shy. Do you like making a phone call? so shy come on now it's easy thank you so moving right along because I want to get to our amazing speaker before that one more announcement last Wednesday gentlemen last Wednesday we had our initial walk with the Rotarian Woo! and I want to tell you we had some good attendance we had uh, Lori Reinbolt was there uh, Ingrid showed up we had our newest members, so we had um, uh, Aaron, who's on Zoom. Aaron came and joined us, and she brought her son, Xavier, who is an adorable two-year-old, amazing little guy who went on the walk with us. Who else was there? Um, Kurt, Brown. Kurt Brown was there, and Lisa Travis was there. So, Oh, and Joe Yurcevich. So we had a group of about six folks, plus the... Um, exchange student and her mom, Laura and her mom. I can't remember her name. But anyway, they joined us. It was a short walk. We walked across the bridge, walked through Historic Dublin, came back, and we got to really chat, you know, and talk about what things are going on in their lives and then what Rotary's all about right now. So, this upcoming Wednesday, I asked a few people. They were a little skittish about, mm, I don't know, but Trevor Donaldson's going to join me, and I hope a few more of you. Claudia, thank you. Claudia will join me. We're just going to meet at Sweetwaters in Bridge Park. There is one at the library, which we forgot about. We want to be on the Bridge Park side of the, bridge, of the river. Then we'll take our little walk. So please, 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 some Wednesday between now and the end of November, think about it and join me because it's just quite an amazing structure, first of all. We should appreciate Dublin and what they've done and checking this bridge out. But also, it's just great to walk and talk. So, enough said on that. Sergeant at Arms is Cap Clegg doing it all today. Um, oh, one the, more thing. The board, the board photo is after the meeting. So, We're everyone having, that's on the board, please come outside. We're taking a picture. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody left this year. It's got to be a past president. The Rotary Book of Readings. Do we ever get this as past presidents? Yeah. Do you ever actually get this? I found it online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's two dollars. Uh, <laughs> if we find, we don't do Rotary stuff. No, this is like district stuff. We don't keep track of this. <laughs> All right, um, Claudia, we need two dollars from our president. And speaking of presidents, we have a past president. You got to learn how to sit, where to sit. If you look behind you, right behind you, Mike, you're the past president. This is where past presidents sit. There's one right there. There's another one right there. Once you're, you just work your way back. She <laughs> two dollars not learning where to sit as a past president. Wow. I mean, you've been up here for three years. We're tired of seeing you. You just got to move to the back. <laughs> All right, so if you have not signed up for a Dublin Irish Festival volunteer, that's a dollar. So put your dollars on the table. So, and then who of you have already been on a summer vacation? Summer vacation. 
okay, and you've got money left. The people that haven't been on a vacation yet, put a dollar out because you don't, you still got money. The rest of us that went on vacation and paid for gas and boat money and green fees do not have money left. So. What, look at all this stuff. Wow. The presidency has changed. You got all this stuff up here. Oh, I'm going to put your ticket on the bottom. So I'm going to have Nine three two one. It's a blue ticket this morning for those of you that aren't awake yet. Nine three two. Jeff Shader hadn't shown up here. Well, Jeff gets eleven dollars. Right. What do we have uh, going on for a nice charity? You can give that to. Happy you're back. You're back. You're back. Nine three three one. You're fit. That's your sign. Three one. What was that? Nine three three one. Nine three three one. Oh, that's me. Oh, nice. Cool. All right, a five of diamonds. While you're up there. Two cards. I think we need the time. <laughs> one in four is five. Well, I'll take that one out. I'll just throw that one out. Bookmark for her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're done. All right, very good. Okay, before we get to our speaker, do we have any happy bucks? There's been a lot of good stuff going on out there. Any happy bucks? Oh, man. Okay, your assignment. Oh, Ingrid. Yeah, my son graduated from the MBA school. He's off to join the venture capital world and choosing which city to go live in. A new style. Right? These young people, they, they decided to interview which five different cities. <coughs> and they're trying to pick. And I keep on trying to get him back to the Irish high school. Get him to stay in Dublin. But I'm not out. But anyhow. He's done MBA. So. so Ingrid has a happy buck for her son finishing MBA, trying to get him, lure him back to Dublin. Anyone on Zoom got a happy buck? Okay, next week, guys, come on. Something happy's going on in your world. Lou? I have a happy buck. Oh. <laughs> I did not win the Sunday meetings, but the trophies came in for the car show. 30 uh, top picks. And best in show. All right. All right. They look good. They look good. Okay. And with that, Wolf, I believe you are introducing our speaker. Good morning, everybody. Um, <clears throat> first of all, we have a flag to present to our speaker today. Uh, he is collecting these for a banner that uh, he's putting together. Right. Yep. So you can tell us about that. Um, our speaker today is Jack Young, who will speak to us about Shadowbox USA, or Shelterbox USA, which is an organization founded in Cornwall, England, by one Rotarian with an idea. Jack is truly an amazing leader, Rotarian, presidential award winner, veteran and business founder, and his list of accolades is many. Jack is a Paul Harris Fellow Plus Five. Uh, Jack has hosted seven foreign exchange students. Jack was past president of the Rotary Club of Conneaut and past district governor in 2005 and six for the Northeast Ohio District 6630. Jack's a past board member of the Shelterbox USA for seven years and Shelterbox Hall of Fame inductee. He won the Rotary Ambassador of the Year for the Shelterbox in 2015, um, past president of the Ohio Mental Health Association, a 32 degree Master Mason, past chair for the International Fellowship of Scouting Rotarians for South America, Central America, North America, and the winner of the Silver Wheel Award. He won the Rotary International Past President Cliff Docterman Award in 2014. He contributed over $1.4 million worth of goods to the children of Nicaragua. He's taken 11 mission trips. He is the founder of Villas Nursing Home and board leader in Conneaut, Ohio. 
recipient of six Presidential Volunteer Service Awards from Presidents Bush, Obama, and Trump. Jack is originally from Marietta and served in the U.S. Air Force and is a Vietnam era veteran. Please help me welcome a great Rotarian, District Governor Jack Young. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be back into this area. Uh, I used to work at Scott's up in Marysville, Ohio for about four years and took a side trip around, around the state. And it's, it's always great to be a part of a Rotarian family. And it is, it's been part of my life. Uh, since uh, 1995 and I look at Rotary as one that we do so much for other people there are other organizations that do the same thing but we we really step up and above and I've had the very fortunate uh, opportunity to meet about six past international Rotary presidents uh, and have talked to them and have been to their homes uh, our current uh, President Jennifer Jones, I've known her for about 15 years, her and Nick, her husband. And I'm going to tell you, you are part of one of the greatest organizations in the world. And I thank you for what you do at the community level. And I, I really am impressed with everything that I've seen with you. And I've been at the Ohio Pets a number of times. So it's been great. So I just want to let you know that because it's very special to me and uh, with all the uh, organizations you belong to and, and what you've done. Briefly about Shelterbox, a lot of people don't know this, but it was founded by a Rotarian in Cornwall, England. He was a Navy SEAL, and what he saw in the world is when there's a disaster, back in, the, in around 2000, there wasn't very many organizations that really could step up and help people. And Tom Henderson, who is the founder of the Shelterbox program, decided he wanted to do something to help. Not to gain fame, not to be recognized by anybody, but other just helping people. And uh, when I joined the board of directors, uh, I'm going to show something. Be careful what you say when you say you'll do something. Because when I was at a, a conference over in Indiana, back in around 2000, 2001, I, I saw Shelterbox, and I just went over to see it at a booth, and I said, oh yeah, I might have an interest in that, so I gave my card. A year later, I got a call, and they wanted me to come down to Florida, where the offices were, and said, okay, we want you, want you to be on the board, so be careful what you say to people that you're going to volunteer, because you will be one of those people, and I think you probably already know that. But Tom is a, was a, a great person, he and his wife, Jane, she's deceased now. But, but when you look at what he did by being a, a military person and starting to help people that were in natural disasters, uh, especially natural, natural disasters. Some people, uh, of course, conflict may, may not be natural, but it's out there. We've got to deal with it day in and day out all over the world. And he did so much. And I was so honored back in about 2000. Uh, six to be invited over to Cornwall, England, to the warehouse of where the tents are put together, and you've got you got brochures out there, so you can see what I'm talking about. But he is a group of volunteers in Cornwall, and he wanted me to come over from the United States, representing the board of directors, to help educate Rotarians throughout the world that we're there to help when there's a disaster anywhere in the world. And I'm really proud to say that. Uh, Tom had a heart as big as you'd ever wanted because he was there to help people. He didn't care where he had to go. He was very fortunate enough that he could do a lot of traveling. And so therefore, it was a great honor to meet him. And to be spending, I spent over a week and a half there at the Cornwall England in their warehouse. And it's not a fancy warehouse. We don't, we don't build things through shelter box because they look nice. We build it just because we want them to be workable to be able to send boxes all over the world. 
Right now we have about nine locations in the world where we have some shelter boxes and inventory, not a lot, because every time we try to build an inventory, we have to use them. And so uh, someone says, well, how do you deal with the politics? And we're not into politics, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to help people regardless of whatever politics, whatever religion, background, whatever. We're just here to help people. We've housed over 1.4 million people in, in the 20 years I've been involved. And it's just something that just it touches my heart because I've seen some of these areas. I've not been on a, one of the uh, training sessions uh, because we do use, uh, I hate to use this word, younger people, but when you put up a tent, if you, uh, and I'll bring a tent over to maybe someday and let you put it up. It, they're not, it's not easy, but if you're a scout, how many have a scouting back, background? It's what you put, so you can do it. However, uh, it's, it's, so it's, it's really not hard, but it's not easy either. So again, uh, we, we look at people all over the world. We have school teachers, young people. We use the scouts throughout the world to help us do what they do. They know, they know how to do it very quickly. So again, it's just something that just touches your heart when you see some of these uh, people and how they're living and how they're getting along. We've had uh, an opportunity uh, to meet before the uh, Ukraine government, not myself personally, uh, but our CEO, uh, she's met before the Ukraine government trying to help them have a place to temporarily live until they can rebuild because there's a lot of structure going on, as you all know, over in the Ukraine area. But we don't want to get into the politics. We're there to help people. That's the key thing that, that, that uh, they want us to do, what we, what we do all these years. The disaster relief itself can take days, weeks, or months to be able to help, uh, help these folks. Now, I usually get the question, well, what do we do in the United States? Well, we have responded to disasters in the United States, but because of our system, disaster relief systems such as the Salvation Army, et cetera, we don't need it as much, I hate to say this, but as much as they do in some of these countries. These countries don't have anything. Well, we got the Salvation Army, we got FEMA, and we got all those kind of things to help our own people, even though we have responded, don't get me wrong, we have responded, but it's nothing like they would be overseas. They don't have the systems that we have in place. So we've been very fortunate here that we haven't had that much to, to deal with. So it's really been overseas uh, in a lot of these areas. I had the opportunity at, at the All Ohio Pets. How many worked at All Ohio Pets? Okay, you know. Uh, I don't know if you, you remember Jennifer Jones. She's been over, she supports us at the tent. I had a picture with her with one of the white tents over there. And these tents are, say, well, it's really not so sophisticated, but the point is they can house up to 20 people. They got sleeping bags, they got stove, they got the little games for the kids, uh, and all those things, just the basic items to survive. And uh, Jennifer has been very gracious uh, in supporting Shelterbox and helping us along with our CEO of Shelterbox to, to have them available throughout the world. So again, uh, we're very blessed to have leaders in our organization that are willing to support. Now, I gotta take a side note here. We had, uh, how, you know what Shark Tank is? We had uh, two ladies that uh, actually founded a uh, illuminating light where it would be charged by the sun. It was in a pillow so kids could have a pillow to sleep on but if they have to go off and, uh, at night and go to the, their uh, restrooms or whatever, there was, a, there was a light in there and they could see to get to where they had to go. They were on Shark Tank. Within about, I was told about 30 minutes later, we had contacted those ladies and said, we want that to be a part of our shelter box so they can have natural lighting some, wherever it may be in Africa, wherever, India, et cetera. And so, therefore, I had the opportunity to meet two founders of the uh, uh, two ladies of the Luminade of the uh, that were on Shark, Shark Tank, and now we include those into our boxes. The boxes themselves are uh, everything is used. By the way, we have, we have in addition to sleeping bags and stoves and so on, 
The uh, shelter box itself can be used in two ways. One, to store food so that the other animals don't get into it. And it can also be used as a flotation device to get kids across swollen rivers and so on. So when Tom put all this together, we only add the things that we really feel is important to survive. We don't get into food or anything like that. So, but it's, it's the survival piece. And with the scouts, they have, they have been a great asset to our organization to helping in some of these countries. At this point, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but do you have any questions I can maybe answer that, what, that you would like to know about? If I, if I have an answer, if I don't have an answer, I'll find it for you. Any, any questions? Yes. Jack, could you tell us a little bit, where do you see sort of the next needs coming? Because we see the different climate situations and everything. Is it anticipated the shelter box sort of think about where the likelihood is that something's going to be needed? Yes. Uh, we give, our board has uh, uh, given a lot of thought to this. The concern that we have, especially with the climate changes, it's, it's going to be very hard to control right at this point in time. And we're trying to stay out of the politics of that, but we, we, we want to be a part of the process of helping uh, all of us understand where that needs going to be. And we, we don't have all the answers yet. It's a very difficult situation. I mean, when you look, I've been to Australia, and when you see what's happening in Australia, even in our own country, what do you do? I mean, the, the, the tents are flame retardant, but on the other hand, they, you can be trapped in a tent too, just like you can a home or whatever. So it, it, it's a very difficult question to answer. I don't have a 100% answer yet, but we're, we're working on that because there is a concern. Because lives are going to be put uh, at stake no matter where you are in this world. So we're going to try to, to work on it. We, when you get an answer, we'll let you know. We just don't quite know how to deal with it because of, that, because of the, uh, the, the climate changes. Can you give us an idea of the scale? How many shelter boxes have been distributed? And, and how many do you need to keep on hand? Well, our goal uh, was to have 100,000 in inventory, number one. We cannot get to that number because every time we start, we have seven locations. We try to get them there ahead of time, whether it's Germany, uh, Australia, whatever. And unfortunately, by the time we start bidding our inventory, there's no inventory because we're using them. Yeah. So right now, if we had a situation, we probably maybe have about uh, 12, 13,000 inventory, a long ways from 100,000. So that, that's what we're, we're working towards. Of course, we need funding for it. I will say that the, the sponsor a shelter box, two ways of doing it. Number one, they're $1,000. I've been on the board since 2006, and we have not increased $1,000. It's been that. You find any item that you buy, save same price for that long a time. So it's been $1,000. Because we will, we will not replace anything unless it's equal. A higher quality or equal price. We want that. We're not going to raise it. Just put something in there. So that that's our frustration with that. But uh, when I was on the board, our goal was 100,000. We're not there. 15,000 maybe. Uh, so we're trying to work on on building that inventory and, and having them preset is going to be so important because right now we we use them, drop them out of airplanes. We use camels in Africa to get them to where they need to go. So we're trying to get closer to the, where the actual disasters are. And we pretty much have got that part of it taken care of, uh, where most of it is uh, the disasters. Any idea how many you've deployed so far? Yeah. The last figure I received was a, probably about 1.1 million uh, tents. So may not be a lot to some people, but that's a lot, a lot of tents. And uh, again, we, we get the boxes out of Germany uh, where they're uh, made the boxes, and we fill them in England. Yes. What size are these boxes? Uh, you consider it about a time and a half, time and a half size length of here. Can you see this here? This table, and it's about halfway up. They weigh 110 pounds when completely full of what we put in them, and that's been pretty much the same all this time. We have uh, had people, I had, we had a 76-year-old gentleman in Africa. They weigh about 110 pounds, by the way. He picked it up, put it on his head, and walked away. <laughs> I couldn't do that, I can tell you that. 
But that's about the size of the I wish uh, I do have one. I, I, I couldn't get down here today, but it, but it's, it's it's about that size. This table here. So and it's got the tent, and it's got the tent again, the house twenty. It's got shovel. It's got a an axe, it's got the things, the basic survival needs of, of the scouts is what I refer to. It's what you need, just basic survival. And that's why the scouts have been so important to shuttle box and helping us deploy them throughout the world. And we are always looking for volunteers. If you want something to do during the summer months, we'd love to have you uh, consider and contact me. We have a training facility down in Texas, uh, outside of Houston, to where we actually spend, they spend a week out there and you get to really get a feel for what it's like of getting these distributed. Because the key thing, you don't have to be strong, but you have to have a personality that's going to deal with all kind of cultures. And that's what we look for, that you're not going to get someone upset just because of what you may say. So you have to respect that culture. But we, spend, we send you out there for a week and uh, on a farm of a, of a Rotarian down there. Yes? We have a question online. Uh, the question is, do you have strategic partnerships with other organizations to help with food and water? We do have relationships, but we only are there as an advisor, uh, whether it be the uh, uh, World Food Bank, the Salvation Armies, uh, those kind of organizations. And each country has their own as well. So we do have that relationship. But we are only there just if, if we, we can advise them or give them our, our opinion, because we don't want them to think that we're trying to control everything, because our focus is on basic shelter. But we do have relationships, and we, we do meet throughout the year uh, with the leadership of the various organizations. And each country's got different, different organizations as well. So we try not to tell them what to do. We just give them our advice and what we see. And we want them to give us their advice, too. Anything else you want to add? Are companies willing to discount their prices? To I'm sorry? Are companies that supply you, are they willing to give you discounts and things? They're, they're willing to give us discounts by not raising the prices. <laughs> so we have a price, uh, let's say a, a sleeping bag is worth uh, I don't know, 25 bucks. That has not increased over that period of time. They, they, they commit to us to be able to keep and maintain a low cost because when that, that thousand dollars includes everything in the box, tents, everything, it includes getting it an average cost of getting it to that country, whether it be by ship, airplane, or whatever. And we do have some people that donate it, but it's an average cost. And so it's, it's been that way for since 2000, since I've been on the board, 2006. So, uh, so that's how they deal with us. We won't raise the price. We'll give you a better product. Equal or less price. That's that's and that, we, we we follow that pretty closely because we know how important it is. Good questions. Where do you get your funding? Funding is coming from individuals like you, Rotary clubs. Uh, we have uh, one example. <clears throat> we went to it's over near uh, Akron, Ohio, to a to a grade school, and the kids were wanting. This is about five years ago, and they wanted to do something. Uh, to help in the world. The teacher was very, she was international in, in her background. So she came over, uh, asked me to come over, and I went over to their, their Rotary Club, just like this, and we talked. And said, well, can we have a shelter box tent for a, a month to try to raise money? Correct, okay, no problem. So we, we get, let them use the tent, and they set it up outside the school, and, and I got a call to come back 30 days later, went into the gymnasium, gymnasium completely full of people from the community, probably you know, two or 3,000 people in the stadium or inside the, the building. And they called me up on the stage and this third grade class, third graders raised $26,000 in 30 days. That was, that's one that really touched my heart. And a young man came up and he said, Mr. Young, I don't have a lot of money, but will you take my penny? That was really good. I said yes, and I, we added a few bucks to it too. But the point is, it got young people involved. The other thing we do is that somewhere we club, if you have like uh, some kind of a uh, function during the summer months, they'll have a shoulder box at that, whether it be that on a square or wherever it may be, and you can use the tent to have it on display and take donations 
from the community and sometimes clubs within Womanstad. So that's another way of doing it. Uh, we have uh, contests. One of the things up at Bald Walls College I did one year is took a tent down and we had a contest between Rotarians and students, college students, who could put up the tent the fastest. Well, as the Rotarians are sitting there arguing with each other how to do this and how to do that, the kids put it up, you know, in half the time. They just went and did it. <laughs> so that kind of so they so the club then matched. Uh, they bought a couple of children boxes because they were not doing as well <laughs> as the students were doing. <laughs> then I've used tents where you would like have a mayor of the city or a council person or whatever uh, can share a tent with maybe the poor or the president of the Rotary Club and get sponsors and raise money that way. I've had some communities raise up to, you know, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Know, that's five tenths, you know, a thousand bucks a piece, a box. But those kind of things, and I'm willing to help you do that because I think the more that people get to know what we're trying to do, and it's not a, it's not a fancy tent, but it can withstand 110 mile an hour winds when the property shakes. It's the, we put them in wind tunnels and we know that, that they will stand that amount. So th those are the kind of things that we can do uh, and you can do and uh, whether it be at the fairgrounds or wherever it may be in, in your communities <clears throat> and maybe maybe you would want to do it a I've had a couple of uh, rotary districts they do it by their clusters and each cluster if they got nine or ten clusters of clubs with about four to five to a cluster they will have a contest who could sleep uh, who can uh, raise the most money so it's all kinds and just be creative and all we're doing is helping people who lose everything in a disaster. Yes? yes. Tell, tell, you've done 11 mission trips. Tell us a little bit about the mission trips that you've been on. Okay, okay, now this kind of switched, kind of a tough topic. Uh, I've gone to Nicaragua uh, near Trinidad 11 times. And the mission trip we do down there is the shoe boxes. I don't know if you've heard of the shoe boxes where they get a uh, we send down a dress for the girls, a pants and shirt for the boys, socks, flip-flops, school supplies, uh, those kind of things to kids to encourage them to get an education. And uh, we have been able to uh, help these people to learn, uh, young people to learn a trade. Because down in these countries, I'm going to tell you, when I first went down there, I, I was only going down once, and I've been down now 11 times. They have nothing. They're sleeping uh, and eating. I'm talking about eating out of an 80 acre garbage dump down in Shenandoah. That's the only food these kids have. They search for food that you and I could throw away. And we, we waste a lot of food here in this country. I'm sorry to say. But uh, so it, it's very desolate. They, sleep, they eat and sleep around this 80 acre garbage dump. And we try to, what we try to do with these shoe boxes is to actually encourage them to get an education. They will not get a shoebox unless they have the following. Good grades, good attendance, and are recommended by the teacher. Very basic. But those rules were set up by the teachers, not us. So if a student meets those three criteria, then they will get a Christmas shoebox. It's the only Christmas shoebox, only Christmas gift they get that year. But we do that. Usually uh, we in our district, we send down uh in an area of 500 to a thousand shoe boxes but we combined with six other rotary districts in iowa texas uh michigan to supply those to the kids down there to get an education a basic education in addition to that we have sent down sewing machines the old you probably remember the old sewing machines we sent those down so they can learn a trade welding uh, we send welding supplies down. I've sent a fire truck down. I've sent four ambulances down. Two years ago, I started sending pacemakers. I don't know if you know this or not, but when someone passes away and you have a pacemaker, if you're cremated, you have to take it out because it'll explode. I didn't know that. And they, they scrap out at about 500 bucks a piece. So about two years ago, I sent down 60 pacemakers and we've extended the lives of about seven people so far. So it's those kind of things. Anything else? I'll, I'll be here for a few uh, minutes if you want to ask any other questions. But thank you very much for the opportunity to be a part of your club, and I hope I can come back. Maybe get me on your list, and I'll get someone to bring me back down. So.
right. Okay. Thank you. All right. My gosh. So many amazing things being done out there, and uh, we can all be a part of it. But I've got to tell you, our uh, fellow Rotarians have created such amazing things. Shelter box, what a great concept, and things that we can certainly help out with. Uh, so let's see. Next week, our uh, speaker is Claire Eastman from Life Care Alliance. She uh, is going to talk to us about Meals on Wheels, but also a lot of other things that Life Care Alliance does. So looking forward to her presentation. And uh, with that, Cap. Where do you go? This book has lots of words of wisdom in here. So, uh, let's see. Closing quote The problems we face today violent conflicts, destruction of nature, poverty, hungry, hunger, and so on are human created problems which can be resolved through human effort understanding and development of a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. We need to cultivate a universal responsibility for one another and the planet that we share. And that's the Dalai Lama. So with that, board members go out to the courtyard. We're gonna get a picture taken. Have a wonderful week. Amen.